So now we know what's going on with MacBook Pros with the M1 Pro and M1 Max, that stuff's old news, at least until we have some more reliable performance numbers and we have some very early ones coming up later in the show. So what does what we've seen already mean for the rest of Apple's in-house silicon lineup? NH asks, I gave answers, what is your projection for Apple's Mac release schedule from now until next year? My thinking is end of 2021 Mac Mini Pro, Spring 2022 iMac Pro, WWDC 22 Mac Pro, Fall 2022 Base M2 release. Although that would mean no new iPad Pros until M2 in Fall of 2022. So thank you for that question and what a great lead in to talking about what's next. So Mac Mini, yeah Apple, what the hell happened to this? I was ready for it, but... But actually, having seen the sheer size of the logic boards inside the MacBook Pros that Apple just released, which seemed to take up almost the entire footprint of the notebook, maybe cramming that inside a Mac Mini shell is actually a bit more of a challenge. I can only assume that they'll be creating layered logic boards, because at least they don't have to pack a battery in here, which I assume is layered under the logic board on the MacBooks. Given the fact that Apple's October event was also just over 50 minutes long, one of the shortest in quite some time, it seems like a decent thought that Apple was trying to launch the Mini here too, but had to pull its segment fairly late in the game because production just wouldn't be ready in time. My assumption is that the Mac Mini will come with all the processor options that have been available to the MacBook Pros, the M1 Pro and the M1 Max, so getting comparable performance. I'd also say we'll probably see a starting price of around $12.99 for the 8-core 14 GPU version, a little higher than before, but I think pretty justified. I'd still hope we see this before Christmas, but I'm unsure if Apple would actually hold another event. And if they did, what on earth would we be seeing? Services? More Apple TV, more fitness stuff with a Mac Mini thrown in for good measure? If there's something else we could be expecting, you'll have to let me know down in the comments, but based on some of the information about the iMac, it might be slightly further off. And speaking of the iMac display expert Ross Young, who I've decided to call Ross Displayman, because I forgot his actual name in a recent video, has shared information that Apple is planning to release the bigger iMac in quarter one of 2022, meaning we'll have it by March. How huge will this display be? 27 inches. So the same as we have right now, but with 120 hertz ProMotion, that new design language, and I'd assume the same M1 Pro and M1 Max SoCs on the inside. Also, you have to take into account the reliability of the source. Ross Displayman has never been wrong. Never. So, Bonkers performance, possibly a 4K camera on the front, and could it be the first time we get to see Face ID come to a Mac? I've said for quite a while that I think the iMac is a great candidate for Face ID, especially as it's so popular in education, and it could recognise the students as they sit down in front of their computer and load their user profile. I mean, it might be in a notch as well, based on some patents that Apple has filed, but would that really upset you? I'm sure some would point out how Apple is doomed already if they did. So a Q1 release suggests that it could be the time that the Mac Mini is delayed to as well, but I guess our Mac Mini could also get a press release style event like the AirPods Max did last year, now that we know what the SoCs can actually do. No need to actually go into much detail, you can say it's a new design, it's got the SoCs in it we've seen already, and just call it a day. The MacBook Air M2 is also due for 2022, and I would have hoped to see them also at the spring event, hopefully in March this time, although Guoming Chi has reported that they won't go into production until quarter three. But if there is one thing that Guo is less reliable on, it's dates. So fingers crossed for sooner rather than later. The M2 would be the direct successor to the M1 with eight cores balanced between performance and efficiency using the A15 generation Avalanche and Blizzard cores and what's expected to be a 10 core GPU with nine core bin variations available in the entry level models. We're also expecting the new design here with the old wedge shaped design that's been with us since the original 2008 uh, MacBook Air being retired with the new flat design in various colours just like the 24 inch iMac taking its place. And also expected to pick up the notch and mini LED displays from the new MacBook Pros that were just seen too. So if you're a notch hater, uh, M1? Mac Pro, of course, the beast mode desktop is still to be revealed, but the signs are pointing to what I said from late last year, that the Mac Pro will feature multiple SoCs, explain the 20 and 40 core rumors, with four efficiency and 16 performance cores, or eight efficiency and 32 performance cores, along with up to 128 GPU cores. Just wrap your mind around that for a moment. And while there were multiple predictions that Apple would be releasing one final Intel-based Mac Pro, I honestly think that Intel's attack ads against the Mac platform has led to Apple 
just deciding to cancel the project and go all in on the Apple Silicon version. And I promised you performance numbers, so here we go. The single core performance of the M1 Pro and Max in the full 10 core configurations is expected to be around the same as M1, 7400 give or take, as the cores are still running at around 3.2 gigahertz and are still A14 generation as expected. Multi-core performance, however, puts these as the fifth fastest Macs ever available behind the 16, 24 and 28 core Mac Pros with their Xeon processors and the 18 core iMac Pro, again with Xeon. But remember in those, everything was handled by the CPU cores. Not the case in the M1 Pro and M1 Max, which have hardware encoders and decoders, piles of more cache and unified memory, as well as 70% faster single core performance, meaning that individual tasks are just much snappier. It's just that when you have to it's just that when you have the constant high workload processors that the Xeon chips will shine as long as they can handle the heat. But once you get two or four of these M1 Pro or X chips into a Mac Pro, that's going to be some stunning performance. So what are you most excited about going forward in terms of the Mac roadmap? What is the product you're waiting for? I'm going to guess a lot of people are going to say iMacs. I don't think they're going to go with the iMac Pro name. They might do, but I don't think they will. We will see. Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.